Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's special presentation for International Women's Day. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Jenny Troutman's here, Director of Products and Services and Training and Certification at AWS, and Heather Rudin, Director of Education Programs of Training and Certification. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and uh, for the International Women's Day special program. Thanks so much Thanks for having us. us. So I'll just get it out of the way. I'm a big fan of what you guys do. I've been shouting at the top of my lungs. It's free. Get cloud training and you'll have a six figure job, pretty much. I mean, I'm over, over, uh, over amplifying, but this is really a big opportunity in the industry. Education and the skills gap and the skill velocities that's changing. New, new roles are coming on around cloud native, cloud native operators, cybersecurity. There's so much excitement going on around the industry and these, all these open positions and they're, they need new, new talent. So you, you can't get a degree for some of these things. So no, you know, it doesn't matter what school you went to, everyone's kind of level. This is a really big deal. So Heather, share with us your thoughts as well um, on this topic, Jenny, you too. But like, where are you guys at? Because this is a big opportunity for women and anyone to level up in the industry. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll jump in and then I'll hand it over to Jenny. Um, we, we're your dream team here. We, we can talk about both sides of this. So, you know, I, I run a set of programs uh, here at AWS that are really intended to help build the next generation of cloud builders. And we do that with a variety of programs, whether it is targeting young learners uh, from kind of 12 and up. Uh, we have AWS Get IT that is designed to get women uh, and uh, ambassadors or women mentors in front of girls 12 to 14 and get them curious about a career in STEM. Um, we also have a program that is all digital online. It's available in 11 languages. It's got hundreds of courses that's called AWS Educate that is designed to do exactly what you just talked about. Expose the opportunities and start building cloud skills for learners uh, at age 13 and up. They can go online and register with an email and start learning. Um, we want them to understand not only what the opportunity is for them, but the ways that they can help influence, you know, and bring more diversity and more inclusion and into the cloud technology space and just keep building all those amazing builders that we need here for our customers and partners. And uh, those are the programs that I manage, but Jenny also has an amazing program, a set of programs. And so I'll hand it over to her as you get into the professional side of the thing. So Jenny, you're on the product side. You've got the keys to the kingdom on all the materials and, and shaping it. What's yeah. your view on this? Cause this is a huge opportunity and it's always changing. What's the latest and greatest? It is a massive opportunity. And to give you a sense, uh, there was a study in 21 where IT executives said that talent availability is the biggest challenge to emerging tech adoption. 64% of IT executives said that up from only 4% the year before. So it's the, the challenge is growing really fast, which for everyone that's ready to go out there and learn and try something new is a massive opportunity. And, and that's really why I'm here. We provide all kinds of learning experiences for people across different cloud technologies to be able to not only kind of gain the knowledge around cloud, but also the confidence to be able to build in the cloud. And so we look across different learner levels, different roles, different opportunities, and we provide those experiences where people can actually get uh, hands-on uh, in a totally risk-free environment and practice building in the cloud so they can go and be ready to get their certifications, their AWS certifications, give them the credentials to be able to show an employer they can do it and then go out and get these jobs. It's it's really exciting and we go kind of end to end from the very beginning, you know, what is cloud? I, I want to know what it is all the way through to, I can prove that I can build in the cloud and I'm ready for a job. So Jenny, you nailed the confidence word. I think I want to, I want to double click on that. Um, and Heather, you talked about you, the dream team, you guys, you're the go to market, you bring this to the marketplace. Jenny, you get the products, this, this, is, this is the key. But to me, the, the International Women's Day's angle is, is that what I hear over and over again is that oh, it's too technical, I'm not qualified. It's, it can be scary. We had a guest on who has two double E degrees in robotics and aer aerospace and, and she's hard charging. She, she almost lost her confidence twice, she said in her career, but she was hard charging. You can be, you can get scary and, but also the ability to level up fast is just as good. So if you can break through that confidence and keep the curiosity and be a builder, talk about that dynamic because you guys are in the middle of it. You're in the industry. 
how do you handle that? Because I think that's a big thing that comes up over and over again. And, 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 and confidence is not just women, it's men too. <laughs> but women can yeah. always, that comes up as a theme. It is. It is a big challenge. I mean, I've struggled with it personally, and I mentor a lot of women, and that is the number one challenge that is holding women back from really being able to advance is, is the the confidence to to step out there and, and show what they can do. And, and what I love about um, some of the products we've put out recently is uh, we have AWS Skill Builder. You can go online, you can get all kinds of free uh, core kind of training. Uh, and if you want you to go deeper, you can go deeper and there's a lot of different options on there. But what it does is not only gives you that base knowledge, but you can actually go in. We have something called AWS Labs. You can go in and you can actually practice um, on the AWS console with the services that people are using in their jobs every day without any risk of doing something that is going to blow up in your face, right? You're not going to suddenly get this big uh, AWS bill. You're not going to uh, break something <laughs> that's out there running. I, you just go in, it's, a, it's your own little environment uh, that gets wiped when you're done and you can practice. And there's lots of different ways to learn as well. So if you go in there and you're watching a video and to your point, you're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is too technical. I can't understand it. I don't know what I'm going to go do. You can go another route. There's something called AWS Cloud Quest. It's a game. You go in and it's like you're gaming and it walks you through. You're actually in a virtual world. You're walking through and it's telling you, hey, go build this. And if you need help, here's hints and here's tips. And, and it continues to build on itself. So you're applying, you're learning and you're applying practical skills and it's at your own pace. You, you don't have to watch somebody else <laughs> talking that is going at a pace that maybe accelerates beyond what you're ready you can do it at your own pace. You can redo it. You can try it again until you feel confident that you know it and you're really ready to move on to the next thing. Um, personally, I find that uh, hugely valuable. I go in and do these myself. And um, I sit there and I, I have a lot of engineers on my team, very smart people. And, you know, I have my own imposter syndrome. I get nervous to go talk to them. Like, are they going to are they going to think I, <laughs> I'm totally lost? And so I go in and I learn some of this myself. I experiment. And then I feel like, okay, now I can go ask them some intelligent questions and they're not going to be like, oh gosh, my leader is totally unaware of what we're doing. And so I think that like we all struggle with confidence. That I think everybody does, but I see it especially in women as I mentor them. And that's what I encourage them to do is go and on your own time, practice a bit, get a little bit of experience. And once you feel like you can throw a couple words out there that you know what they mean and Suddenly other people look at you like, oh, she knows what she's talking about. And you can you can kind of get past that feeling. Well, Jenny, you nailed it. Heather, she just mentioned okay. she's in the job and she's going and she's still leveling up. There's, that's that's the in when you're in, but it's also the barriers yeah. to entry are lowering. You guys are doing a good job of getting people in, but also growing fast too. So there's two dynamics at play here. How do people do this? What's the playbook? Because I think that's really key. Easy to get in. And then yeah. once you're in, you can level up fast at your own pace to ride the wave. And then there's new stuff coming. I and mean, every reinvents is 5,000 announcements. So it's yeah, like, exactly. like a zillion new things. And AI is yeah. hot now. Reinvent, so, you know. oh, sorry, reinvents a perfect example of, of that um, ongoing imposter syndrome or confidence check for all of us. Um, you know, I think that something that, that Jenny said too is we really try and meet learners where they are and, and make sure that we have the the support, whether it's accessibility requirements, or we have the content that is built for the age that we're talking to, or we have um, a workforce development program called Restart that is for people that have very little tech experience and really want to talk ab about a career in cloud, but they need a little bit more handholding. They need a combination of instructor-led and digital. But then we have AWS Educate, as I mentioned, if you want to be more self-directed, all of these tools are intended to work well together and to be complementary and to take you on a journey as a learner. And the more skills you have, the more you increase your knowledge, the more you can take on more. But meeting folks where they are with a variety of programs, tools, languages, and accessibility really helps ensure that we can do that for learners throughout the world. That's awesome. Let's get into it. Let's get into the the roadmaps of people and their personas. So, and you guys yeah. can share the programs that you have and where people could fit in, because this comes up a lot uh, and, and when I talk to folks. There's the 
young person who's, you know, I'm a gamer or whatever, I want to get a job, I'm, I'm in high school or elementary or I want to tinker around or I'm in college or, you know, I'm learning, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an entry level kind of uh, entry. Yeah. Then you have the reskilling. Uh, I'm going to change my careers. Mm -hmm. so I'm kind of bored. I want to do something compelling. How do I get into the cloud game? And then the advanced reskillers. I want to get into cyber and AI. And then there's other. <laughs> Could you break down? Did I get that right, or did I miss anything? And then what's available for those kind of lanes or those persona lanes? Well, let's see. I could start with maybe the high schooler stuff, and then I, and we can bring Jenny in um, as well. I, I would say you know a great place to start for anyone is AWS. Dot amazon.com slash training, you know, that that's going to give them the full suite of opera options that they could take on. If, if you're in high school, uh, you can go on to AWS to educate. All you need is an email. And if you're 13 years and older, you can start exploring the types of jobs that are available in the cloud. And you could start taking some introductory classes. You can do some of those labs in a safe environment that, that Jenny mentioned. That's a great place to start. If you are in an environment where you have an educator that is willing to go on this with you, this journey with you, we have this AWS Get IT program that is, again, educator-led. So it's an after-school or it's an, a program with, where we match mentors and students up with um, cloud professionals. And they do some real-time experimentation. They build an app. They work on um, things together and do a presentation at the end. The other thing I would say too, is that if you are in a university, I would double check and see if the AWS Academy curriculum is already in your university. And if so, explore some of those classes. There, we have um, instructor-led, educator-ready course curriculum that we've designed that help people get to those certifications and get closer to those jobs. Um, and as well as, hopefully then lead people right into skill builder and all the things that Jenny talked about to help them as they start out in a professional environment. So is the Get IT, is that an instructor led that the person has to find someone for or this available for them? It, it is through teachers, it's through educators. Um, we are in, we've reached over 19,000 okay. students. Um, we're available in eight countries. There are ways for educators to lead this, but we want to make sure that we're helping the kids be successful and giving them an educator environment to do that. If they want to do it on their own, then they can absolutely go through AWS Educate or even um, and to explore kind of where they want to get started. So what about someone who's, you know, educated in the middle of their career, might want to switch yeah. from, you know, being a biologist to a cloud cybersecurity guru or a, a cloud native operator? Yeah, so in that case, AWS Restart is one of the, a great program for them to explore. We run that program with collaborating organizations in 160 cities and 80 countries throughout the world. That is a multi-week cohort-based program where we do take folks through um, um, you know, a very clear path towards certification and job skilling that will help them get into those opportunities. Over 98% of the cohorts, uh, the graduates of those cohorts get an interview and are hopefully on their path to getting a job. So that is, um, you know, that really has global reach. We, the partnership with collaborating organizations helps us ensure that we find communities that are often unreached by cloud skills training. And we really work to keep a diverse, you know, focus on those cohorts and bring those folks into the cloud. Okay, Jenny, you've got the, the skill builder action here. What's going on on your side? Because you, you must have to manage all the change. I mean, AI is hot right now. I'm sure you're cranking away on curriculum and, and content for SageMaker, large language models, computer vision, cybersecurity. <laughs> we do, There's, there uh, are a lot of I, options. How is your world? Tell us about what people can, can take out of way from your side. Yeah, so a great way to think about it uh, is if they're already out in the workforce, or they're entering the workforce, but they are technical, have technical skills, is, is what is the what are the roles that are interesting and the technologies that are interesting? Because the way we put out our, our training and our certifications is aligned to paths. So if you're look, interested in a specific role, if you're interested in architecting a cloud environment or in security, as you mentioned, and you want to go deep in security, there are AWS certifications that uh, that give you that if you if you achieve them they're very difficult 
<laughs> but if you work to them and achieve them, they give you the credential that you can take to an employer and say, look, I can I can do this job. And they are in very high demand. In fact, um, that's where if you look at some of the publications that have come out, they talk about, um, you know, what are people making if they have different certifications? What are the most in-demand certifications that are out there? And, and those are what help people, uh, you know, get jobs. And so you identify what is that role or that technology area I want to learn. And then you have multiple options for how you build those skills, depending on how you want to learn. And again, that's that's really our focus is on providing experiences based on how people learn and making it accessible to them because not everybody wants to learn in the same way. And so there are uh, there is AWS Skill Builder where people can go learn on their own, which that is um, that is really great, particularly for people who maybe are already working and have to, yeah. to learn in the evenings, on the weekend, people who like to learn at their own pace, who just want to be hands on, but but are self starters. Yeah. Um, and, and they can get those whole learning plans um, through there all the way aligned to the certification and then they can go get their certification. Yeah. There's also classroom training. So a lot of people maybe want to do kind of continuous learning through an online, but want to go really deep with an expert in the room um, and maybe have a more focused period of time if they can go for a couple of days, right? And and so they can do classroom training. We provide a lot of classroom training. We have partners all over the globe who provide classroom training. And so there's that. And and what we find to be the most powerful is when you couple the two. Yeah. If you if you can really get deep, you have an expert, you can ask questions. But but first, before you go do that, you get some of that foundational that you've kind of learned on your own. And then after you go back and reinforce, you go back online, you try out things that maybe you learned in the classroom, but you didn't quite you hadn't used it enough yet to quite know how to do it. Now you can go back and actually use it, experiment and play around. And so we really encourage that kind of you know, figure out where what you know, what are some areas you're interested in? Go learn it. And then go, you know, get a job and continue to learn. Because then once you learn that first area, you start to build confidence in it. Yeah. Suddenly other areas become interesting. Because as you said, cloud is growing, is changing fast. And once you learn a space, first of all, you have to keep going back to stay up on it as it changes. Um, but you quickly find that there are other areas that are really interesting. I've, too. I've observed that the training side is just like cloud itself. It's very agile. You can get hands on quickly. You don't need to take a class and then get in weeks later, you're in it. Like it's real exactly. time, so you're you're immersed, in gamification and all kinds of ways to l funnel into the either advanced tracks and certifications. So, you guys do a great job, and I want to give you props for that and, and a shout out. The question I have for you guys is: Can you scope the opportunity for these certifications and opportunities for women in particular? What are some of the top jobs pulling down? Scope out the opportunity because I think. When people hear that, they really fall out of their chair. They go, wow, I didn't know I could make $200,000 doing you know, cybersecurity. Well, they, yeah, or maybe more. Um, and what are the, I'm just making the number up, I don't actually know, but like, I know people do make that much in cyber. But there are huge financial opportunities with certifications in education. Can you scope that order of magnitude? Can you share any data? Yeah, so in the US, they certainly are uh, certifications uh, on average aligned to six digit uh, type jobs. And if you go out and do a search, uh, <laughs> there are research studies out there uh, that are refreshed every year that say, what are the top IT industry certifications and how much money do they make? And the reason I don't put a number out there is because it's constantly changing. And in fact, it keeps it's going up. It's going up, <laughs> not going down. Um, but I would encourage people to do that quick search uh, what are the top IT industry certifications? Again, based on the country you're in, it makes a difference. But if you're US, um, there's a lot of data out there for the US and then there is some for other countries as well around around how much you, on average people you, make. Do you list like the higher level certifications, stack rank them in terms of uh, order of like, say I'm a type A personnel, I want to climb Mount Everest. I want to get the highest level sec um, certification. Well, <coughs> how do I know that? Is it like laddered up or is like, how do you guys present that? Yeah, so we have different types of certifications. Um, there is a foundational, which we call the cloud practitioner. Um, that one is more about just showing that you know something about cloud. Um, it's not aligned to a specific job role. Um, but then we have what we call associate level certifications, which are aligned to roles. So there's the uh, solutions architect, um, cloud developer, so de developer operations. And so you can tell by the role um, and associate is kind of that next level. And then those the roles often have a professional level, which is even more advanced. And basically that's saying you're, you're kind of an Uber expert at that point. And then there are technology specialties, um, which 
which are less about a specific role, although some would argue a security technology specialty might align very well to a security role, but they're more about showing the technology. And so typically when you, so it goes foundational, advanced, professional, and then the specialties are more on the side, they're not aligned, but they're deep. They're deep within that area. So you can go, you can pick your deep dive and jump into where you're comfortable. Uh, Heather, talk about the uh, commitment in terms of dollars. I know Amazon's flaunted some numbers, like 30 million or something, people they want to have trained, hundreds of millions of dollars in investment. This is key, obviously, more people trained in cloud, more operators, more cloud usage. Obviously, I see the, the business connection. What's the, what's the women relationship to the numbers? Can you, or what the experience is? How do you guys see that? Obviously, International Women's Day, get the confidence, mm -hmm. got the curiosity, you're a builder, you're in. Right, it's that easy, right? Yeah. It, it doesn't always feel that way, I'm sure, to everybody, but we'd like to think that it is. You know, Amazon and AWS do invest hundreds of millions of dollars in free training every year that is accessible to everyone out there. Um, you know, I, I think that the the sometimes the hardest ob obstacles to get overcome are getting started, and we try and make it as easy as possible to get started um, with the tools that we've talked about already today. You know. We run into plenty of cohorts of um, women as part of our restart program that are really grateful for the opportunity to, you know, see something, see a new way of thinking, see a new opportunity for them. We don't necessarily break out our funding by women versus men. We want to make sure that we are open and diverse for everybody to come in and get the training that they need to. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that we are accessible and available to women and all genders outside of the U.S. and inside the U.S. Well, I know the number's a lot lower than they should be, and that's also why we're, we're promoting this heavily. Um, there's a lot more interest I see in in tech, so, so digital transformation is is you know, gender neutral. I mean, it's like the world eats software and uses software, and uses the cloud. So it has to get 50-50 um, in my opinion. So you guys do a great job. Now that we're done kind of promoting Amazon, which I wanted to do, because I think it's super important. Let's talk about you guys. What got you guys involved in tech? What was the inspiration? And to share some stories about your experiences and, and advice for folks watching. So I've always been in traditionally male dominated roles. I actually started in aviation <laughs> and then moved to tech. Um, and what I found was I got a mentor early on, uh, a woman who was uh, senior to me and who was um, kind of who I saw as the smartest person out there. <laughs> she was incredibly smart. Um, she was incredibly kind and she was always lifting women up. And I kind of latched onto her <laughs> and followed her around. And, um, and she was such an amazing uh, mentor. She brought me from throughout tech, from company to company, job to job, um, was always positioning me in front of other people as the, the go-to person. And I realized, wow, I want to be like her. <laughs> and so I, that's been my uh, focus as well in tech is you can be deeply technical in tech or you can be not deeply technical in, the, in tech and you can be successful both ways. But the way um, you're going to be most successful is if you find other people, build them up and help yeah. put them out in front. And so I personally love uh, to mentor women um, and to to put them in places where they can feel comfortable being out in front of people. And that's really been my, my career. I have, um, I have, I have tried to model uh, her approach as much as I can. You know, that's a really interesting uh, observation. It's a pattern we've been seeing in all these interviews for the past two years of doing the International Women's Day is that networking, mentoring and sponsorship are one thing. Right, so it's all one thing. It's not just mentoring. It's like people think, oh, just mentoring. What does that mean, advice? No, it's sponsorship. It's pull, lifting people up, creating a karitsu, creating networks, really important. Heather, Heather, what's your experience? Yeah, I'm sort of the, the example of somebody who never thought they'd be in tech, <laughs> but I happened to graduate from college in the Silicon Valley in the early 90s. And next thing you know, it's more than a couple of years later and I'm, I'm deeply in tech. Um, and I think it, you know, when we were having the conversation about confidence and, you know, willingness to, to learn and, and try, you know, that really spoke to me as well. Um, I think I had to get out of my own way sometimes and just be willing to not be the smartest person in the room and just be willing to ask a lot of questions. And with every opportunity to ask questions, I think somebody, I, I, I ended up with good mentors, 
male and female, that saw the willingness to ask questions and the willingness to kind of be humble in my approach to learning. And that that really helped. Um, I, I'm also very aware that, you know, nobody's journey is the same. And I need to create an environment on my team and I need to be a role model within AWS and Amazon for allowing people to show up in the way that they're going to be most successful. And sometimes that will mean giving them learning opportunities. Sometimes that will be hooking them up with a mentor. Sometimes that will be, you know, giving them the freedom to do what they need for their family or their personal life. And modeling that behavior, regardless of gender, has always been kind of how I choose to show up and and what I ask my leaders to do. And the more we can do that, I've seen the team kind of been able to grow and flourish in that way and support our entire team. I, lo I love that story. You also have a great leader in Maureen Lonergan, who I've met yeah. many conversations with, but also it starts at the top, Andy Jassy, who can come across, he's kind of technical, he's dirty, you know, he's a builder mentality. He's, he, is, he has first principles and, and you're bringing up this first principles concept and whether that's passing it forward, what you've learned, having first yeah. principles helps in an organization. Can you guys talk about what that's like at your company? Uh, Cause everyone's different. Yeah. And sometimes whether, I'm, and I sometimes I worry about what I say and, but, but I also have my first principles. So talk about how principles matter in, in how you, you guys interface with others and letting people be their authentic self. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in Jenny and then you can. Um, so, and uh, the, the Amazon leadership principles are, are super important to how we interact with each other. And it really does provide a, a set of guidelines for how we work with each other and how we work for our customers and with our partners. But most of all, it gives us a common language and a common set of expectations. And I will be honest, they're not always easy. You know, when you come from an environment that tends to be less um, open to feedback and less open to direct conversations than you find at Amazon, it could take a while to get used to that. But it's for me, at least, it was extremely kind of empowering to have those tools and those, those principles as guidance for how to operate and to gain the confidence in using them. Um, I, I've also been able to participate in hundreds and hundreds of interviews in the time that I've been here as part of a, you know, an interview team of bar raisers. I think that really helps us understand whether or not folks are going to be successful at AWS and at Amazon and helps them understand if they're going to be able to be successful. Bar raising is an Amazon term and it's, it's gender neutral, right, Jenny? It is gender neutral. <laughs> bar is a bar, <laughs> you know, it raises. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it's funny, we we say that our culture here is peculiar. And when I started, yeah. I came from, I had been in consulting for several years. So I worked with a lot of different companies in tech. And so I thought I'd seen everything and I came here and I went, <laughs> <laughs> I see what they mean well, by peculiar. It in, is very different environment. In the um, fullness of time, it'll all work out. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, and it is, it's funny because it, when you first start, it's, it's a lot to figure out to how to operate in an environment where people do use a 16 leadership principles, right? I've, I've worked in a lot of companies with three or four core values and nobody can state those. Yeah. We could state all 16 leadership principles and we use them in our regular everyday dialogue. That is an awkward thing when you first come <laughs> to have people saying, oh, I'm going to use bias for action in this situation and I'm going to go move fast. And 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 they're actually used in everyday um, conversations. But, but after a couple of years, suddenly you realize, oh, I'm doing that. And maybe even sometimes at the dinner table, I'm doing that, <laughs> which can get to be a bit much. But but it is, it, it, it creates an environment where we can all be different. We can all think differently. We can all um, have different ways of doing things, but we, but we have a common kind of overall approach to what we're trying to achieve. And, and that's really, it, it gives us a good framework for that. Jay has great insight. Heather, thank you so much for sharing your stories. We're going to do this not once a year. We're going to continue this uh, Women in Tech program uh, every quarter. We'll, we'll check in with you guys and find out what's, what's new. And thank you for what you do. We appreciate that getting the word out and, and really it is an opportunity for everyone with education and cloud. And it's only going to get more, more opportunities at the edge and AI and so much more tech. Thank you for coming on the program. Yeah, thank you for having thank us. You, we need more learners. Thank you. And that's the International Women's Day segment here with leaders from AWS. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.